Welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are having a great day. Today we are going to be talking about fish finder frequencies and how technology has changed over time to help us catch more fish. So this video is a part of a much larger series of videos. I have them all in a playlist called Fishing Fundamentals. Once you're done watching this video, click the little eye and I'll have all those videos in there. I'll be posting these videos daily, so you want to subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell so you will be notified whenever I post a new video. Let's go ahead and get started in talking about fish finder frequencies and the technology that supports them. Well, fish finding technology has exploded. I remember being young and using a hummingbird and it really couldn't tell you where fish were. All it could tell you was really depth. Uh, people were, I also remember having a flasher, which was actually pretty cool. Uh, technology nowadays, we, we can look down below us and really live action now uh, with certain technologies. But I'm not going to be talking about those technologies. We're going to be talking about the typical sonar technologies of about the last 10 to 15 years. So let's, let's go in the way back machine just a little bit. And back in the days of the single frequency sonars, you either got 83 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz. Single frequency, and they would give you a little different image. I'll show you guys a little comparison of each one. Uh, I don't know if I'll do it this way or if I'll do it this way, but I'll show you a comparison. So one of the major differences between the 83 and the 200 kilohertz was the cone angle that it dispersed at. The 83 kilohertz had a much larger, wider cone area of 60 degrees, so you would see a whole lot more noise and things in that one. The 200 kilohertz is 20 degrees, so it had a much narrower and a much cleaner look, but you would miss some of the stuff that would be typically seen in the 83 kilohertz. So as you can imagine with those two frequencies, the 83 would provide a stronger return and much more returns than the 200 kilohertz, but the 200 would provide a lot more crisp detail than the 83. So next came chirp. Chirp wasn't an actual frequency, but actually a series of frequencies, typically of about 40 that are sent in a pulse. Uh, that goes back into what CHIRP actually stands for, which is Compressed High Intensity Radar Pulse. You have a pulse of about 40 frequencies being pulsed down and then being returned back to you. So what a typical CHIRP frequency would look like is 160 to 200. And that's probably what people would call a, a high CHIRP. Uh, medium CHIRPs maybe 140 to 180. And then a low CHIRP is 120 to 160. So CHIRP is really just a technology that uses several different frequencies and then uses a software to sort through that data and actually provide you a much better image. I'll throw one up uh, versus either the single band 83 or 200 kilohertz. It gives you a lot more details. It gets rid of a lot of the clutter and it'll help you find more fish. So a few years after that, we were introduced the side imaging and down imaging. Those two technologies have definitely revolutionized the fishing industry by themselves. Yeah. These technologies use several different frequencies, so I'm going to kind of divide those into two different categories, one being high definition and then the other being ultra high definition. So high definition frequencies are 400 and 800 kilohertz. They still provide really good detail and are the first ones that revolutionized the fishing industry. But as technology got better, we realized the higher the frequency, the better definition we got. And the Ultra HD category has frequencies that are greater than 800 kilohertz. Typically these are 1,000 kilohertz to 1,200 kilohertz or 1 to 1 1.2 megahertz. It's just a unit thing. Most people use the megahertz when you go above a thousand, so don't get too confused. They both are the same thing, 
but the Ultra HD frequencies provide a lot more detail. And I'll show you a quick comparison right here of uh, one of the high definition categories versus the ultra high definition category. Now, what's really actually interesting uh, about this technology uh, for down imaging and sign imaging is both the HD and the ultra HD frequencies still use chirp functions. So when you use those, you'll actually typically see a window of frequencies that you use, especially on hummingbirds. It'll tell you the frequency range that they're using and you'll see, oh, it's still using a chirp type function, which also helps with the detail that they give you. So to be all and honest with you, it's actually been pretty incredible compiling this video for you guys, uh, going through the different uh, stages of technology that we've been through and to see the advancements has absolutely been mind-blowing. Um, I'm going to throw up a few more of the images kind of like, hey, this is where we started from and this is where we ended up. It's really incredible. We didn't talk about anything like the, the live imaging things that we that are going on such as live sight and live scope and those type technologies. Those are on just a whole nother level. And we can talk about those another day. But hopefully this video helped you guys kind of understand uh, where the frequencies came from uh, and why they, certain ones give you more detail than others. Let me know in the comments below if this video helped you understand those. And if I forgot something, also let me know and help out some others as well. But like always, until next time, get out there and go catch you some fish.